Hey everyone, and welcome to Adobe Max 2023. Thank you for joining us on the Adobe Live First Take series, taking your time. My name is Alex Hogue. I am a filmmaker based in Bend, Oregon, and we are talking motion design here with a Emmy award-winning motion designer, Kyle. That's What's up, true. Kyle? How you doing? Hi. Uh, it's really great to be here, Alex. Thanks so much for having me around here. Uh, I know that you personally made that decision, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm here. We're yeah. here. But I'm happy to be here. This is awesome. I love Adobe It Max, is. So. Max is super great. There's so much creative energy here. It's really inspiring. Um, super fun place to be around all these design nerds. So many. <laughs> you know? it's, it's amazing. But let's go ahead and, uh, for, for those of everyone watching, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about yourself, what you do, and your background. And, yeah. and how did you end up here today? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, so I am a motion designer and creative and technical director and educator, and I don't know, too many other titles. Um, I'm based in Kansas City. Uh, I've been making videos and animation and stuff for a long time now, and at some point and I stuff. fell into teaching it too, and it, the ball just keeps rolling, you know? Excellent, excellent. <laughs> well, uh, what are we going to be learning today? Um, well, that's a good question. We'll find out here. Um, so I have a supremely stupid project that I made um, that fulfills all kinds of delightful technical requirements that's stuff I love to do and talk about all the time. So supremely <laughs> stupid. Not just stupid. But it is supremely stupid. Um, I, I feel like I shouldn't over-prepare the audience for it. They can kind of absorb it, okay. and we'll maybe watch it once, and then I'll turn the volume off and we can kind of point out some of the things that are happening, both technically and creatively and uh, whatever. Perfect, yeah, sounds right. great. Well, before we do that, real quick, uh, for everyone watching, be sure to subscribe on YouTube at Adobe Live and also follow over on Instagram at Adobe Live to keep up to date with all the Adobe Live community stuff uh, and also just everything happening here at Adobe Max. And with that, uh, take it away. Okay. So, uh, looks like my screen's up, so I'm going to go ahead and roll through this. Glockulous. Right. Glockulous. Oh, so yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume down and just let this loop a couple times so we can kind of talk over it. So uh, I've been playing around with some of the 3D model import that's in After Effects beta, which you know we might take a peek at today, um, and some of the roto brush capabilities, and obviously I've been animating designs for a long time, uh, editing video for a long time. So this is just kind of a mismatch, mix match of uh, all that stuff. A mix um, mash, huh? Mix, it's just all those things. Um, I also am a big fan of puns and just kind of like goofy stuff. So I saw that there was a bunch of kind of uh, silly looking VR footage um, on Adobe Stock. There's a ton of it. And I was like, well, let's have some fun with that. All these people groping around at the air in front of them. Um, and uh, I like to grow a salsa garden and oh. make salsa a lot. So it was kind of in my head. So here we go. There's a lot of good food 3D models in uh, on the Adobe Stock library. So I love it. You see. So everything, everything <laughs> in here is from Adobe. It's whether everything the footage, in here is from the Adobe graphics, stock. Yep. Uh, except one shot, which is my own hand in my own garden. It's oh, my little personal cameo. touch, a little cameo. cameo. This yep. is your garden. A handio. Uh, no, we'll workshop I'll, that. <laughs> puns are already starting. I love yeah, it. get ready. Um, so you know, uh, this started out as just kind of like a basic edit here. And then you can see there's a lot of kind of simpler graphics going on, and that's actually a motion graphics template that I created for myself to be able to use it throughout. Okay. You'll see a couple shots here where we've used the roto brush in After Effects so that uh, this girl is cut out from her background, so you can have these objects go behind her, right? Right. And right, these right. are 3D objects that are being used in After Effects, so you can kind of manipulate those however you want. And real quick, what, yep. is, what is rotoscoping? Rotoscoping is when you cut something out. 
in, it's like the cutout in Photoshop, but you can do that with video. Oh. So that's happening every single frame. And I've been doing this long enough to remember having to do that the hard frame way, literally manually doing it every single frame. Lots but of But now we have these great tools like Rotobrush, and there's a brand new version of it out that's even smarter and better. Um, and it makes a lot of that really easy. Um, so, uh, you awesome. know, if we have maybe time, we can we'll dive into, into that. that yeah. Bit, yeah. Um, maybe we'll see what the people want us to talk about. Um, I love and, the uh, mix here of the guac, <laughs> the VR, the roto brush, just everything. Yeah. It speaks to your personality already. <laughs> uh, indeed. Um, and then we have, you know, our, our animated uh, product screen here that um, is based on, actually, I'll just pull it up real quick here. Um, and I how long did you spend on this entire project? I mean, obviously you've day. been doing this a long time, but okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. a little less than a day. So it's not overly complicated at all? Not terribly for me. Okay. Um, and, you know, it, it, if this were for a client or something, maybe I'd polish it a little bit more. It's, of course, yeah. It's a little, I didn't color correct it, for example. You know, there's there's some things in there that you could take it further, but okay. this felt like enough. <laughs> and, and what's going on in this graphic that we're uh, So in this graphic here. right here, um, this is just kind of our end screen. I, I mostly designed it in Illustrator, but then I want to just bring it into After Effects, animate it simply. I think this is one of the things we can dig into today. Okay. But you'll see we have some 3D objects, that uh, onion and pepper tomato. See, it's subtle, but see how they're spinning a little bit in here? Yep. Yep, those are 3D objects in After Effects, in the beta. Um, and then those letters are all animating on. This was actually, again, from Adobe Stock. I just found this great typeface that somebody designed that seemed like very extra, okay. and this whole concept seem very extra, so I should probably use something that matches that visually, right? I love it. <laughs> it, it feels feels on, on brand. Though. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, so we got a lot of people yep. here in the chat. Um, thanks everyone for joining, and uh, if you do have questions <laughs> as we're going through this, Kyle here is going to answer all of them. Every single one. Every That's single a promise. One. Well, we got, some, <laughs> we got some here, but we'll, uh, we'll come back to those yeah. here in a little bit, so. I think, I think what we wanted to start with was this little Guaculus logo animation, because that's pretty approachable here. So this was a little uh, logo that I designed in Illustrator, um, and then I brought it into After Effects and okay. just quickly animated it. So that seemed like a thing to be useful, um, and we'll just step through it real quick. And, Perfect, uh, so we're, we're, go we're going to, uh, you're going to take us through multiple programs here. So I am. Illustrator, f Photoshop? This. This just project okay. touched a lot. I did a little Photoshop, but I don't have any of those designs with me. I designed some stuff in Illustrator. I used After Effects, Premiere. I used a couple of the Substance apps to do the 3D stuff, okay. either prepping or creating. I modeled the tortilla chip from scratch, as one does. Um, Excellent. <laughs> and would you, uh, actually, can you play through uh, just like just that last uh, little animation there so uh -huh. we can see what we're going to be doing uh, here? Guaculus yeah. here? Yeah. There you go. And you know what, just to give it to the people here, I think just to punctuate everything, I did add a little sound effect. There's a little crunch oh, oh, that, nice. that punctuates that logo because, you know, you got to hear it too. Really sell it, right? So just kind of quickly step through the animation, see what's happening there, and then we can kind of dive into some software and see what we did. So here is my uh, Illustrator file, and you can see layer wise, there's not a whole lot going on, it's just a few. Okay. You got this inner circle, this outer circle, and then the, the name. Yep. Okay. Uh, trademarked. Easy. Yep. yep. Uh, <laughs> I will credit my 12 year old. Um, he actually kind of helped me like push some wow. of the puns further. Okay. And I don't. I think I still came up with Guaculus, but like he got me there. Excellent. So I thanks for that. <laughs> credit to um, the kids. One thing with designing an Illustrator for After Effects, you want everything to be at like the top level layers. Because if they're, if you have objects that are within, like further down in the layer stack, After Effects won't necessarily see those as individual things. And it's going to put them all together. Ah, yep, okay. yep. Good but keynote there. You can, and we're going to do this actually, you can convert them into what are called shape layers in After Effects, and then you can animate the vector paths themselves. Wow. So there's a lot of, a lot of functionality here. So you'll see I've got, I've got three layers, and then we're going to bring this over into After Effects and animate it. So let's hop over into After Effects here. Um, you know what? You want to show, yeah, how, how did you come up with all this to begin that's, with? That's a good thing. Yeah. Before we hop into After Effects, let's just quickly touch this in Premiere. Um, my, my poor laptop may not like all of these things while we're streaming. So. There's a lot going on, <laughs> but I think it's important to see kind of how, you know, I mean, you wouldn't yep. start out just in After Effects. Absolutely. You know? It's going to take a long time, so you got to break it down a little bit, kind of give yourself like a little paper cut. Yeah, exactly. The, so this for me that you're about to see, this is kind of the equivalent of making a paper sketch that an artist might do. 
I went through stock, you know, I made a library with um, all the stuff that I thought I might use, and then I started culling it down. And then I just uh, dove into Premiere here, and I did like a real rough edit. I kind of figured out the timing, and you can see this beautiful font work that I'm doing here with the default um, Times New Roman or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just getting the pieces worked out and kind of figuring out what shots I was going to use and like which ones might need more effects work and stuff, right? Okay. And real quick, just because I see all the colorful markers at the bottom there, are those, yeah. what's going on there? Uh, well, this is, um, this is uh, beat uh, markers. Yep. Um, I used a tool called Beat Edit. Uh, it's a third party tool that I'm a big fan of. Um, and is that it just will a plug in for yeah, Premiere? Exa uh, for Premiere, also After Effects, and that will analyze the music and give you markers on the beat, which I really like to cut to and makes it real easy to see. Exactly, and you can you can copy that over, bring it into After Effects, and see Absolutely. exactly where those are. And you can make the markers manually too. I do it a lot. I've spent a lot of time like going like this okay. and hitting the M key. DJ Kyle's in the yep. house. Yep. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, so as you can see, this is just, you know, I'm refining the set. Look, you see this beautiful end screen here that I created? Uh, <laughs> Clever tagline. Yeah. We'll get there eventually, right? Not sure the client's going to buy it, but. Yeah, well, it's, it's first draft. And <laughs> then, right. you know, I kind of worked through it. Let's, you can kind of see here as I started bringing stuff into my timeline and turning stuff off, um, just kind of building it as I go. And then, you know, it eventually got to the final one where I kind of got rid of some of that old trash um, and, and worked through it. And this does, as we mentioned, have some Mogurts going on and stuff. We might dive back into that if we okay. have time, but yep. I want to make sure After Effects has the power it needs for some of the stuff we're yeah, going to do. Yeah, so. let's start small and kind of <laughs> build our yeah. way up. So we'll start kind of with the logo. Yeah, perfect. Or the end card. What do you, what do you call it? Logo, uh, bumper, end yeah, card? It's, let's call it an end card here. Perfect, yeah. end card. Um, so I'm just going to import that Illustrator document here. Um, you can drag it straight from your file browser. You, you have you know file, import, file. You can do it that way too. Um, I just like to drag stuff because I usually work with two screens. Okay. And I got to ask a question here. So you did the the end card in Illustrator. Uh -huh. Why not do it in After Effects? Or was that just the way, like, say, a client gave you it in Illustrator? Well, if you're going to put me on the spot, Alex, I actually designed it in After Effects, and then I made it in Illustrator so that we oh. could pretend to do this workflow right now. But Ooh. okay, yeah. okay, you called me out, so. But it's great to know that you know <laughs> for everyone. I mean, there's a lot you can do in Illustrator, yeah. so you yeah, can bring exactly. it in. Exactly. And, and I, it makes I do sense. use it all the time, and it's when you need the ability to do that kind of more precise vector work. Illustrator is the place to go. Perfect. Um, okay, so I dragged that file just directly into After Effects, and you can see it gave me this little pop-up here. Yep. And when you bring in layered Photoshop or Illustrator work. Um, you get the opportunity to say, do you want it to be footage? That's just kind of like a flat sandwich. Yeah. You might as well be importing a JPEG, okay? Not, not super helpful right. for, for not our in this purposes. case, Because we want to animate be. individual yeah. elements, yeah. Um, but in this case, I want it to become a composition, which is the, the name of the container that you work in in After Effects. Um, and then I want everything to be layer size and not document size. Because then each, each object would come in with its bounding box the size of itself instead of the size of the whole document. Right, and that, well, why don't you, can you show that really quick? Like, or, or uh, what's the best way? Well, so layer it's size be is best so that, so that each thing, I mean, you'll see the bounding box in a second. I don't okay. want to do document size. That, that's fine. There are times for I it. I do think that's a holdup of some people though. So I <laughs> think is. this is an important step to make yeah. sure to know, use layer size. Yes, layer size, 99% of the time. There are reasons for it, but we won't go into it right now. Um, so I'm going to open up that composition that it created and we can't see anything. Well, that's because you might recall the design is black on white in Illustrator. Oh. But okay. that white over there is actually just transparency, right? right. So we're just okay. looking at transparency here as well. So there I'm just going to enable this little switch in my viewer here and see our transparency. But we can't work like that. Let's go ahead and just come up here. I'm going to double click this rectangle tool, and that's going to create a full sized Love shape that. layer. Happens so, to be white already. So you don't have to perfectly drag it, just double click no, that top. Just double click. I'm going to rename that to white BG and just push that uh, just push that down to the bottom layer here. I can go ahead and lock that because I don't need to do anything with it. Excellent. So now we have our Guaculus logo and there's that beautiful bounding box we were talking about, exactly the size of the thing. Ah, there it is. And then we have our avocado inner and avocado outer, okay? okay. Good naming means you don't have to you know, sift through things in here. You actually know what you're dealing with. And when you start dealing with layers and time, being able to keep track of stuff, helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, right? 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and convert these two layers to shape layers okay. uh, because we want to do some stuff with them that, that will need that functionality, okay? All right. So I've got, you'll see right here, these have Illustrator yeah, the icons. icons. Yep. In the timeline, it tells you exactly what it is, right? I'm going to right click on these and choose Create, Create Shapes from Vector Layer. And that's okay. going to turn these into shape layers, which are After Effects native vector layers, okay? Perfect. Um, you'll see it makes copies, it turns off the other ones. I like to live on the edge, so today I'm just going to go ahead and delete those things. Ooh. They're gone. Ooh, okay, don't need them anymore. Yep. I mean, in this project, so I do have. You're almost using that as like, a, it's like tracing paper kind of thing. Uh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Um, but now these are totally editable here in After Effects. Um, and uh, if you look over here in the properties panel on the right, you'll see I've got all kinds of stuff. Um, the properties panel should be pretty familiar if you've been using it in any of the design apps. Yeah. Um, and it's in After Effects now as of last year. I think it's a great way Ooh. for designers to be a little more comfortable in here. A nice familiar thing for them to latch on to. And you don't have to go searching everywhere. You don't for have to go searching. Thing, yeah. so. um, if you have been working in After Effects, everything is still in the timeline. And when I'm talking about shape layers, I do mean everything. Ooh, but, okay. <laughs> um, but we're going to use the properties panel for a lot of this. So if you look over here, you've got things like the stroke color. So I could just click on that and make it a beautiful Adobe Red if I wanted to. Okay. Right? Um, I don't right now, but I can. Green feels <laughs> nice and ripe. It does. Or, or I guess it would be a brown. <coughs> um, so I'm going to open this up, and in this case, Blue it one created is hot. this thing. <laughs> um, so if you look in here, the, the guts of these get a little scary for some people, but just to explain what's happening, we have that path, mm -hmm. and then in this case, we have a stroke, okay? just like you would an Illustrator. I'm actually going to add a fill to this because it never had one before. And so now you can see we have a fill and a stroke. I actually want the stroke to be above the fill. Ah, so there you go, so you can see it a little bit. Layering yeah. works within these too. Um, and that's not really the fill color I want, so I will come over to my properties panel here, and I'm gonna set that to white. So it looks the same, but now it gives me a thing that can cover up stuff behind it, okay? Okay. Sneaky, right? Um, and this avocado inner, which I'm going to go ahead and rename. We don't need that outlines on there. I, I appreciate After Effects telling me that that's what it is, but, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm going to go ahead, click on that color chip, and make this green. Just make it stand out a little bit better. Make it right? easier on the eyes, right? Um, this is going to be the thing that kind of leads our animation, right? This is our, our hero. So I'm going to animate this, and then we'll do some of the other layers. So okay. I might even just turn these off real quick. So just we yeah. keep it simple. Declutter a bit. I like it. Um, approachable. So I'm going to open up my position property, which again, you can see over here on the properties panel, or you can see it here. I use the hotkey P to expose just that property. Perfect. And a little or slightly advanced product. animator trick, I'm going to right click on that position and separate the dimensions because I only need to move Ooh, okay. the Y. I only need to move it upwards. Uh -huh. And this will give me a little more control when I want to finesse the animation in a minute. Okay. So. <laughs> that kind of makes me think. So again, why why wouldn't you just only move the one on the on the keyframe? That one Y axis, I guess. Yeah. Well, you absolutely can. Position is a little bit of a funky property when you try to start massaging the speed of the keyframes. Okay. Um, and so uh, this just gives me some more flexibility okay. for for the step I'm about to do in like two steps. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take your word for it. So yeah. right click, separate dimensions. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Um, and you can turn that on by default in the preferences if you care. Um, I will point out, so we have a very long composition here. This is 30 seconds long. We don't need all that. Yep, that's, um, uh, that's long. That's way too long. <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to bother to like trim that at all. All I'm going to do is just make my work area a little shorter. Kay. The work area is this uh, blue and gray bar along the top here. And you can actually just drag these ends or you can use the B to set the beginning, or N to set the end. Excellent, I love that you're sharing all the uh, the hotkeys. I, I am a fountain of hotkeys. <laughs> I don't apologize for keys. it. I should have introduced you that way. <laughs> should have. Um, yeah, that, I'll put that on my business card. Okay. Um, and this way, as we work on the animation, we only have to worry about this three seconds and not anything after that. Okay, it's just for preview purposes here. Okay. So, let's go ahead. We know about we know that this is where we want this thing to land, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to kind of work backwards here, because okay. if I move it to where it starts and then try to find this spot again, that's a little tricky. So I'm going to come up to um, maybe, let's say, about 20 frames in. 
all right? Okay. And I'm going to make um, a keyframe on my Y position, which again, I could do over here in the properties panel, or I can do it down here. It's the same thing, just whichever is easier for you. I'll click that little stopwatch, and now I have made a keyframe, which as we discussed earlier, is a specific value at a specific time. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and so now if we move to a different time and give it a different value, then After Effects will animate between those for us. Perfect. And for anyone uh, just kind of tuning in right now, we uh, are going through Kyle's project. He made a whole, uh, we got a whole, a whole a video whole here. So we're just focusing on the end card right now, in which case uh, we have, what do we say, Guaculus? Guaculus. Guaculus yep. logo is uh, how we animated it. So mm -hmm. um, yep. that's pretty much where we're at. And anyone, if you got questions, throw them in the chat and we'll get them over to Kyle. Please do, love questions. Um, okay, so we're going to, move this down a little bit, not too much. And then I actually want this to kind of come just a little above. I'm going to actually copy paste that end keyframe and then just push it up a little bit. I'm creating what's called overshoot, yep. where you, you go a little bit past and then you land. Okay? okay, And it just helps give it some life. Let's do a quick preview and whoa. Okay. 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 Uh, you it's know, getting there. Getting there. I feel like we can speed this up a little bit. Just move some keyframes. Okay, getting there. I think it maybe needs to go a little bit lower. Boom, okay, getting there. I'm gonna go ahead, and I talked about finessing these keyframes a little bit. Yep, I'm yeah, it looks a little, little jerky right little, now. Little, yeah, I'm gonna press the F9 key. Uh, you'll Put see my memory. keyframes <laughs> change to these little hourglass shapes, and these are easy eased now. And so even if I just preview this, you'll see it's a little smoother. Yep. A lot smoother, actually. Yeah. Um, and if you are so inclined, I won't go too far into this right now. With this property selected, I can click this thing up here, which is called the graph editor. And now I get the ability to go in and just really fine tune Make the speed smooth. of the way that these different values are being interpreted. And you can really dial that in, make something just really super bouncy or chunky or whatever you want it to be. Right, and that makes it a huge difference, especially when you're just starting out. That's like a, a key thing to know. It yep. just really brings it to the next the level. Key frame thing to know. Oh, there it is. There, there it is. is. Ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Kyle. <laughs> um, so we know that we want uh, this thing to scale a bit as it's coming on too, okay? Okay. Well, I know that. <laughs> you Now you know it too. This we, is the creative we all process. It so is. We, we get to hear <laughs> what's going on in the mind. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and enable an animation on scale as well, okay? And then we'll just kind of come back to the beginning of our timeline. I don't even want that down all the way, but maybe just a little bit here, okay? About about 50%. I'll just kind of easy ease that keyframe as well. Let's see how that feels. Boom. It's got a nice little energy to it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So now we need to have that um, the rest of the avocado going on, right? So what I want this to do is for this other piece to kind of follow it and then grow out from behind it. Mm -hmm. And so this layer you just turned on, that's from I the importation yep. from Illustrator exactly. earlier. Exactly. So but, but converted to But converted to shape layers because yep. we're going to do more stuff with it. Um, but yes, that's that imported layer converted to After Effects shape layers. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and flip this just so you have a little less confusing stuff to look at. And as we're going through this keyframe, we got a question from uh, question from the chat for the keyframe. Why the overshoot? And I think we touched on in the graph editor. I think we touched on that a little bit, just to kind of smooth things out and make it feel a little more natural. But what's your take on it? Let me show you. Okay, so uh, these both have the easing. The first one is going to have overshoot. The second one won't. Mm. Okay, Come on. number one. Overshoot, not. It's just, uh, it's a little more playful, a little more energetic here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, my preview's being, there you go. See, the first one has that nice overshoot, and then it lands, and this one's just kind of right there. This so is, it's really just kind of that nice, subtle little touch yeah. to make it, make it a little cleaner. Yeah, exactly. Excellent, well, there you go. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to turn that uh, avocado outer back on here, and I'm going to use what's called parenting to make it so that the outer follows the inner one wherever it goes. Okay. Any of that transform animation that I've done here, position, scale, if I'd added rotation, whatever, 
this other layer is going to become what's called a child and okay. inherit all of those movements, okay? okay. So it's kind of like a leash. Yeah, yeah. it's a good all way right. to think about it. Go. And actually, there's a little curly Q thing right here called a pick whip, and that's the most fun way to apply this. So on this avocado outer layer, I'm going to click and drag the pick whip up to the inner, and then let's watch what happens. There we go, you see oh, it follows every, along. Everything, so you didn't yep. even have to do it to the other one. And so now I'm going to do some animation on this layer itself, but you see it's kind of inheriting some animation, and then we'll give it its own animation too. Cool. So, I'm going to open this thing up, and this one I do need to do in the timeline. Um, I'm going to do some animation on the path itself, okay? Um, let's make this a color that we can see a little bit better, this beautiful Ooh. fuchsia here. And you can actually see the path itself. You can see all those little vertices. And it's almost a circle, but you know, it's got that elongated edge. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we animate this path property. And then we kind of come back to, I'm going to do it here and then probably move the keyframes. I want to be able to see what I'm doing, right? Okay. I'm going to see if I can edit this path to basically make it a little circle that just lives right inside this other circle. And remember earlier, when I filled this one with white? Yeah. Now you see why. Uh -huh. So I can hide all my little imperfections right behind it there. <laughs> the magician so, reveals his yep. secrets. So you'll see, it's mostly a circle, and then I just need to kind of bring these other points in. And like, it doesn't need to be perfect, I just need to get it close enough that it doesn't stick out from behind that other one, right? Right. Let's bring that in just, just a little just bit more. Yeah. This is just like working in Illustrator, but not, not quite as uh, fine-tuned. Okay. Um, then I'll take this, this uh, keyframe. I'm going to go ahead and drag that back to the beginning so that kind of starts happening as this is coming up, okay? Let's maybe have that animation stop there, easy ease that, and let's play it and see. Maybe okay. we need to tinker, maybe this is great. That seemed very fast. I think that's all right. Okay. Maybe, maybe scooch that over just a little bit. Boom. Wow, okay. It's looking great already. Not bad. Yeah. Um, I'm going to call that good for now. And then uh, maybe offset just a few frames. Uh, there we go. Uh, and then let's bring that uh, text back on. And you know what? This is still just like, a f this might as well just be a triangle or something. Mm -hmm. After Effects hey. doesn't really care. It's just an illustrator layer. Um, I'm not going to bother to make this live text because I, I don't need to right now. Perfect. Um, so I think what I'll do, let's animate the position of this again. Kind of have this land sort of the same time as our logo. So we'll come to about that same keyframe. Enable position. I would probably split this up too, but let's see what happens if we don't. Just come back a few frames here. And let's have this one just a little higher on screen. You can drag it in the viewer if you like. This one's just going to pop into place here. I'm actually just going to trim this layer in a little bit so it okay. doesn't exist until we want it to. Right, right. Same as any other program. Yep, it just exactly. doesn't come in until then. And I see uh, Robert in the chat, Greg in the chat, Calix, Atkins Realm. Hey, guys, just want to say hi. If you have any <laughs> questions, throw them in the chat. Please do. Love the questions. Um, just do a little housekeeping here. Let's see how this feels. We probably need to tweak it a little bit. Eh, I, think, I think we need to kind of tighten that up maybe kind of match the way that other one drops. Just kind of dragging layers around. A lot of animation is, you know, going more or less where you think it needs to be, and then you just watch it and tweak it and watch it and tweak it until you go a little bit insane. Yeah, um, and yeah then how do you really decide when it's done? Yeah, yeah, uh, just when it needs to be due. Um, honestly, I think this is pretty good. You know, I could I could tinker with this for a bit, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty I happy feel, with it. I feel pretty yeah. good about that. Yeah. If there's any questions about the whole process of uh, just kind of animating this, Throw them in there. Um, I'd be curious to look at some of the other elements of your project, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Uh, we have a lot of elements, so uh, we can kind of throw this out to you folks if you want to steer this a little bit here. Um, we do have the... Um, yeah, let's pop over, because I know some people are kind of just jumping in now. And yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll play this one more time without the music. Mm -hmm. um, so we have all of these little animated text bits that uh, go over the footage. Um, we have you know some rotoscoped footage, some 3D objects. Um, some more of this. A lot of these are motion graphics templates that I created to drop back into Premiere. Um, and then we have this animated end screen here. Maybe that's an interesting thing to dive into. Yeah. Um, if folks want. But if someone has a request for 
yeah, uh, roto brush or anything like I, that? I'd be curious to see, because I know it's pretty common, people want to kind of cut things out from yeah. the background. Um, just maybe really quick on, totally. uh, on what, how you'd go about doing that in After Effects. Well, here is that exact shot. Uh, you can see here, let's do a quick preview. You can see, you know, she's dipping those chips. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Um, and the way Roto Brush the works. She's making the guacamole there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what's, there's, a, there's a stone thing that you use to do it traditionally. It's called a mokahite, I think. It's like Ooh. this little stone mortar and pestle bowl. Anyway. I think um, I need to come over to your house. <laughs> you got I'm, the real guac. I do guac. make pretty good guacamole. All right. Um, yeah, you're welcome anytime. <laughs> um, okay, so we've seen our clip. We know what we're going to do here, and we're going to try to cut her out. Okay, and so we do have one quick question actually from, from the last one before we jump into this. Is uh, Would you say it's better to leave the imperfections of the keyframes versus having them align on the same frame? I think it 100% depends on what kind of project it is. Um, sometimes you want everything to be you know, fairly clean and rigid. Sometimes you want stuff to be, maybe messy isn't the right word, but a little more organic. Okay. Um, so I think it kind of depends on what the vibe is. Like the thing about animation is that you can communicate a whole lot through the way something moves. Um, so it's kind of about what message you're trying to send with that motion. All right, well, there you go. There you there have you, it. There you go, have it. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, so switching gears back yep. over to the, yep. the Roto Brush here. Uh, okay, so to use Roto Brush, what you're going to need to do is actually open the clip uh, in its own little viewer. This is called the Layer Viewer, so I'm going to double click my clip, and you'll see it's, uh, it looks kind of the same, but there's a few more stuff. This is kind of like using isolation mode in Illustrator. You're soloing it, basically. Okay. okay. Um, and then Roto Brush is this little person in paintbrush up here, exactly what we're going to be doing, right? Okay. So I'm going to make sure that I'm right at the beginning of my clip here. And you'll see, uh, maybe you can't tell here, but this clip is trimmed down quite a bit from a much longer one. Rotor brush is a little intensive, so we don't want to do the whole thing, just the area that we know we need. Okay. Which I figured out by making that rough cut in Premiere first, right? Yep. Very essential if you're doing any kind of visual effects work like this. And uh, for... Rewinding just slightly here, uh -huh. we don't have to go, you know, all the way back. But uh, could we touch on what the definition of the keyframe was again? We can. That's a great yeah, question. Yeah, since I asked you it beforehand. Yep. Uh, for those of you who don't know, before the stream, I, I was going to challenge Kyle to do the entire thing and not say keyframe, or see how many times he could go without saying keyframe. And uh, he answered the challenge. Uh, well, I mean, I basically, you just said, basically I'll came do up. it, but it'll be annoying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so how would you define a keyframe? Uh, so a keyframe is a value at a time. Okay. And so as you saw in here, we have a couple specific values at specific times. Mm -hmm. And then because we gave it a different value at a different time, After Effects moves between those. In the case of something like scale or position, it's really easy to see that change, right? Okay. And then how would you define, I mean, just the markers on the timeline? And actually, how do you make a marker on the timeline in After Effects? In After Effects, it's with the asterisk key, actually, over here on your number pad if you have one. Um, in Premiere, it's M, which makes more sense because yeah. it's <laughs> marker, but After Effects has a lot of hotkeys, mm -hmm. so Mask stole it already. I love markers in both. Okay, but, but yeah, I use markers all the time. Yeah. That, that asterisk key is very helpful. So they are, they are different yeah. to, to answer the question in the chat. Um, okay, so uh, going back into my layer menu here, I'm going to select my Roto Brush tool, and then the way this works, you'll see I have a little green cursor here. You don't need to like go carefully around the edges. This okay. is kind of like a magic wand, or I'm going to blank on the term. Photoshop's better cutout tool now. <laughs> We're both blanking here, on the yeah. term. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, Adobe. Um, but watch this. I just have to kind of roughly paint inside her shape. And look at that. Oh my gosh. I, I, I was a little sloppy here. So what I'm going to do is. We got a little bit of the window there. Yeah, we got a lot of slop. I'm going to hold Alt or option if you're on Mac, and I'm going to now say don't do this part. See how it's red? Ah, so the modifier key is key. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then there is, uh, this ch clip is a little bit of a challenge because her shirt is very similar to that background color. Um, so I'm just going to kind of touch this up. I'm being a little sloppy with my mouse. I usually work with a tablet. Um, I'm just kind of like telling it stuff that I want it to ignore, okay? And I'm not going to be too precious with this today. She does have a ponytail. Let's go ahead and see if we can catch that, which again, kind of the same color as that background. But honestly, Roto Brush does pretty well with this. 
Let me just grab her hand in this little controller. And, and this, then, this is the yep. new Roto Brush? This is the new Roto Brush. What's new in it? Well, uh, it's better specifically at people. Um, it, it does have some AI power behind it, but really Roto Brush has for a little while. It's got better, newer AI stuff behind it. Um, if you're a person who likes to know these things, uh, Roto Brush 3 is what just came out, yep. um, and it is better. It's particularly good with humans and like limbs crossing each other and things like that. Excellent. So, if you've had challenges with the old Roto Brush, use this one. It's also way faster. Yeah, faster and more quality. Yep. So, makes your life a <laughs> lot easier. Yep. Uh, so, uh, I think this is close enough. Uh, I will just point out that as you're doing this, if you want your brush size to be different, mm -hmm. you can hold down Control and then just kind of move your mouse up or down and you can change your brush size. That, that's kind of a lot there, but yeah. uh, if we need it. So, what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to step through this frame by frame. Um, you could just use page down, same as anywhere else, or you can hit uh, control and right arrow here. Right, and, and page down, page up is basically next. Frame by frame, yeah. Frame by frame and After Effects. Because again, the arrow keys were already busy with another job. They move things around. They do. Um, oh, so I made a little mistake here. I'm going to set the resolution higher. Roto Brush wants Ooh. you to be at full resolution so that you're working the same as your clip here. Okay. So Rotobrush is doing what's called propagating now. Okay. And it takes what you fed it, and then it kind of keeps trying to apply that to other things, okay? Um, see, now that I set this 4K clip to full resolution, it's, it's taking gonna, a little longer to It's going to take a little while to chug. This laptop is not as uh, quite as powerful as my home machine. But um, if we uh, let this go a few more frames here, when she starts moving more, um, you'll see that it's following her outline as she goes. Dramatic pause. And, and in the past, <laughs> I mean, you'd be sitting there with a cup of coffee and a pen tool. Uh, yeah. yeah. A whole lot of mask points. 60 frames a second. Well, hopefully not 60. Hopefully 24. Um, I'm just going to hit the space bar and kind of see where this goes. Um, this this may, I, I think the streaming outward is, is taking up some of the video uh, brains as well. Yeah. Um, well, we could just maybe do, do just a couple yep. frames and yep. work off of that and just kind of show the concept. I if see. It's, it's, oops. I accidentally dragged something. Okay. Let's bring this in. There we go. You'll see it's starting oh, to follow goes. her okay. pretty well. Uh, there are a couple little bits where I kind of need to correct it. You know, sometimes it's not perfect. Um, if we go just a bit further, you'll see like this lamp behind her. It kind of is like, is this part of her head? I think so. So you can just use that, again, hold Alt, and kind of say, nope, that's not her. Right. And as you keep going, now you've kind of corrected it, and it will, it will know, um, you know what you've got there. And so what we're doing right now is just kind of selecting her uh, separate from the background. Exactly. And exactly. then, um, I'm sure you're going to get into this, but it's being asked, uh, is there a way to kind of clean up the edges? Because sometimes it might not be... Absolutely. As, there, it might be a little crispy. There's a couple ways to clean up the edges. I might go ahead and hop to like a pre-baked version of this. Just yeah, to kinda, just for time's sake. Yeah. yeah. Um, though I will, uh, one thing that's very important in Roto Brush. Okay, when you get through this, you need to click this little freeze button, and that will make it stop thinking about this, oh, okay? okay? Once you, you're through and you're happy with it, make sure to freeze it, and that way it doesn't have to keep processing. Good, good note um, there. Yeah, that's actually really important. That's very <laughs> important, yeah. extremely Don't important. Don't miss that step. Make um, sure to hit the freeze. Yep. And I will point out too, there's a couple, uh, again, kind of like Photoshop, there's different ways to visualize what you're doing. Love so you that. can kind of see, you know, there's a couple different modes here, whatever works for your particular clip. Um, you can see the actual mat, Okay. Um, when yeah, and that's great if you like missed a little window yep, that you yep, didn't see. So exactly. Love that. Uh, so once you've gotten through this and you freeze it, you can come over. Roto Brush is uh, will be in your effect controls. It is applied as an effect, and you have a variety of feathering and contrast, and you can shift the edge around and stuff. But there's also another tool in here, and we'll see. Um, this might make it struggle as well. But and let me ask you a question here. Let me pause mm -hmm. you for one second, yeah. or as you can continue working on here. But um, I know when I was first using this, and maybe some other people in the chat. This is all really cool, and but it's a lot. There's a it's, lot of settings yep, here on the left. Can be. What is like your resource when you were learning this? Like, what would you recommend how, how to learn these? Yeah. These different well, settings. Well, um, I mean, there's a lot of great tutorials online that will go over this. But the thing about compositing work like this is a lot of times you kind of know roughly what you're trying to do, and then you kind of just have to tinker with it until it looks right because every shot 
whether you're doing green screen or cutout work or yeah. compositing things, every shot needs to, you know, you just need to kind of work on it until it feels they're all done yeah. or it's due, okay. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all you get. That's all you get. Um, so Speaking of which, we got like another 15, 20 minutes okay. or so. Okay, great. Um, so you, you futz with this, but for things like hair, which are notoriously hard it's to cut tough, out, yeah. even in still, right? But especially mm -hmm. in video. Um, there is actually another tool in here that I'll show you. It's called Refine Edge, and this has been refined quite a bit lately too. Okay, so you'd use this on top of the Roto Brush tool? Yes. Okay. So once you've done Roto Brush, you actually do this before you freeze. If there's an area like her hair that we decide we want to see um, more carefully, you can kind of like brush around the edge here, and you're basically telling it like, this area I want you to pay special attention to. Oh, and you right. see how you get this little mat here, so the white is what you're keeping and black is what it's getting rid of. So hair is the best example. Um, you know, if you have a, I don't know, a kitten or something, you know, that'd be a great one too. Um, anything that has these kind of wispy edges, okay. you can use this refine edge tool to just tell it to give special special treatment to these like edges. Pay a little more attention. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And you know, you'll add a little bit of processing time there too, but um, same thing, you'll kind of step through and just make sure it feels good um, on a faster machine. On a, a lot of times you can just run a preview and be like, looks good, great, moving on. Yeah, speaking of uh, machines, uh, what are we working on here? Um, I'm working on a Dell gaming laptop, okay. which is great for doing you know, presentations and stuff. When you start getting a 4K clip and rotoscoping and stuff like that, you know, yeah. it's, it's going to get I, heavy. I probably could have spent a little more to do those capabilities, but. Yeah, I know we had a question <laughs> in the chat asking about machines and powers. I don't, I don't personally know all the specs and everything. Maybe you do, but. Uh, yeah, I, the thing about After Effects is you want a pretty decent processor and a lot of RAM lot and of a RAM. good video card. Okay. All the things. All the things. All the Which things. A lot of those line up with what you would want for video editing uh -huh. as well. Yep. You know, um, anytime you're working with, uh, you know, more professional video apps, like you probably don't want the onboard video card, for example. You want a dedicated video card. Right. So spend the money on the video card, yep. the RAM. Yep. Awesome. And like, if you are looking at laptops or desktops, um, if you're kind of just looking for something that's not crazy uh, expensive or you know way more than you might need. A lot of times, gaming machines are very close to what we need for this kind of stuff, because they're going to have pretty decent video cards in them and yeah. pretty decent processors. Yep. So it's a good place to start. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Great tip. Great place um, to start. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over to a pre-baked version of this uh, composition here, yep. so that we can kind of see it. Uh, here's, um, there's a little bit of extra com um, complication going on here. I kind of reframed this shot, but let me, here we go. Hop into the original. This is this is the finished shot, ah, and you the can see it. Chips. I kind of showed myself. This is actually where I want to frame it for the what will go out. But here are the flying chips, um, and which yes, were just rotoscoped out, which is the same process. We yeah. Did there. So I'm going to try and just show her and her plate here. So here is her, and here is her plate. Um, and right now it doesn't look like much, but we could make a text layer, for example. Make this much bigger. Oh, it's up at the top. And we got probably another uh, just under 15 minutes. Um, but there is an ask if, if you think there's going to be time to see a little bit of the new 3D workings. Yeah, we can touch that a little bit. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know how, you're, well, how much we stuff can, you got here. We but. can get into it a bit uh, while I'm in this composition. Perfect. So as you see right here, I just made a an horribly ugly text layer. And I put it behind her mm -hmm. in this shot, right? Um, and so, uh, I might, well, we'll see. We'll see if this plays. <laughs> I might just scrub around Why is around it called here. a plate? Uh, that's a visual <laughs> effects term. Uh -huh. And so I picked it up at some point in my life, and now I like to use it. Excellent. Um, all it is, that's a good question, by the way. Um, it's that clip. It's just that clip without anything, okay? And then there's some other stuff in between, and then we have the rotoscoped version of her that has her cut out. So she's just over her own clip, mm -hmm. but the cutout version of her means now we can put other stuff in between. Okay? It's a great question. Um, I'd be curious to know who came up with that originally in the, in the probably, VFX world. Probably someone in yeah, the 70s or 60s or something when you literally had to 
Maybe even earlier. You know, when you literally had to like use glass plates yeah. and trick photography and all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't know. You Fun can Google fact. it and, if and tell us. Up, yeah. yeah, let us know. <laughs> let us know if you can find the answer. Um, Who termed the VFX term <laughs> like clean plate? Yeah, clean plate exactly is, is what it is. That might be if you wanted to remove something from a shot. You could then call it a clean plate, and then you might stack that thing back on top of itself. You know, there's, there's some all, kind, all kinds of permutations here. Um, in this case, I'm going to give myself a little bit of uh, more timeline space. Crazy stuff going on over there. A lot of things happening <laughs> here at Adobe Max. <laughs> um, so for this shot, because it has a camera move, yep. I also did some camera tracking uh, so that we would be able to match when we put the 3D objects in here, we'd be able to match that. And I feel like that's an essential part of this workflow. So I'm just going to show you, I kind of, um, in this case, for the camera track, I ended up like cutting some things out so it would ignore that background we could see through the windows, which was messing it up a little bit. Yep. So I actually trimmed it so it was only like the couch and the ceiling. Yeah. Yep. So it would, it would scope that. Um, just so you know where to do that, I'm not going to run it right now. Mm -hmm but you would select your clip, go up to animation, and track camera, okay? okay. And then you'll end up with, um, in this case, I actually ran that on a pre-comp, um, which I had done that prep work and done it, and you'll see this 3D camera tracker then makes all these little points that it tracks, and you can, from that, create a 3D camera and trackable objects in 3D space that you could then tie other things to. Right. Which we did here, and it's what I'm about to show you. A lot of capability inside of After Effects. A lot Effects of capabilities. In terms of compositing, cameras, animation. So you see these beautiful blue squares? These, for me, were just kind of my little reference marks okay. to make sure that my track was feeling clean. And I think it was, right? I just yep. wanted to make sure it felt like everything was moving with the shot. And then I kind of used those as the home base to do any of my other 3D work, OK? Yep. And um, I don't know if I have time to build it from scratch, but I'll just show you real quick this chip, okay? Um, I won't go into the technicals. After Effects uh, mostly wants a format called GLB, which is a newer 3D format. Just holds a lot of information in one file, okay? okay. Um, I'm just going to quickly create a new composition and we can kind of see that, uh, that chip model. Here's my... <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to literally hold it for a second. Uh, as, as you might see here, this layer. Yeah, well, I think your mic's being worked on, so I'm going to talk for a minute. Um, so far, we've been hanging out with uh, Kyle here, and he's been walking us through his project, and we're talking about all sorts of things. Uh, a great place to start in After Effects with a, a simplified animation, as well as rotoscoping. And then uh, now we're talking 3D. We've gone on quite a journey. And now you got your mic Ho fixed. Hopefully my mic is on. Hopefully okay, great. Audio team here is great. All right. They're working hard. So I brought this tortilla chip into just a, an empty composition here. And you'll see this has this little 3D widget that shows that we can manipulate it in 3D space. This is a full 3D object. You can see it has a little bit of depth. It's a chip, so it's pretty flat. Yep. But um, we can do all kinds of wacky stuff with it now. Um, just as a quick example, I'm just going to duplicate it real quick, Control D, and I'm just going to offset the second copy of it a little bit here, just so you can kind of see that we do indeed have two things. Quickly make a camera, just kind of orbit around, and you can see like, yep, those yeah, are two 3D objects, is. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. They, I'm not lying to you. Make me hungry over here. <laughs> um, and even uh, you know, if you're into this kind of stuff, hop into the beta. You can even start doing cool stuff like make environment lights. Um, we'll see, uh, these can start casting shadows on one another. Uh, if I turn on cast shadows, the top chip, there you go, is going to cast a shadow. I've got my quality settings pretty low here, but um, you know, you can see it works. It's a thing. Yeah, it's looking great. Um, so in this case, all, all I did, um, I'm going to explain it with my hands. I think it'd be a little easier than trying to show it. Um, can you mime it out? I will. Uh, 
the, the chips in this shot, there's one, it's called a null object in the center. Okay. It's just a layer that you make to parent other things too. You already saw me parent something earlier, right? Right. And sometimes you want a layer to do that, but you don't want to see that. Right. Okay? Yep. So that's what a null object is, which you can find under layer, new, null object, or control, alt, shift, y, it's a claw hand uh, hotkey claw. there. <laughs> um, so I created that thing, and then I made a couple of chips, and they're all sort of just this ring around that null. Right. And then that one null is a place I could kind of like rotate that in 3D space, and I'm just rotating that ring, okay? Perfect. Kind of like the rings of Saturn or something. Yeah. It's just all spinning on that one point. So there, it's, it's all it is. I mean, in this instance, it's almost like having an invisible plate. I mean, yes. Careful using the plate term, but it's sitting on a plate and it's just rotating the plate. Yeah, these chips are artfully the arranged around the edges of the plate, right. and then you're you're spinning it oh so carefully. Which makes perfect sense with a VR <laughs> it does. content. It does. <laughs> Maybe that's what she's doing here. She's. <laughs> we can use one of the other clips of people. Can we get a GIF of this? Yeah. <laughs> Do it, internet. internet. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, so if I go ahead and unsolo these layers, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and kind of get some of our chips back here after After Effects takes a second, and you'll see um, if if we go through this shot, it might be a little slow to preview here. It might be better um, in the actual uh, export, but yeah. these chips are just rotating around her in a ring, and then each chip has a little bit of its own rotation, just to kind of like give it some more life. Yep. And prove like, yep, they're 3D objects, because I can pretty clearly see it. <laughs> and, and we do actually have to wrap up here in just a few minutes, but uh, any final questions, please send them in, and we do have one here. Uh, are the uh, chips imported in 3D? And I believe the answer to that is yes. So those chips actually were pulled from Adobe stock, uh, and then brought in, it's basically a drag and drop scenario here. So, uh, any other questions, feel free to send them this way. We've been hanging out with Kyle, and uh, we've been working all through his project, which has taken us from some basic animation to, uh, gosh, we did all kinds of stuff. Basic animation, the new Roto, Roto Brush 3, mm -hmm. we brought in some 3D chips, yep. and uh, yeah, what else <laughs> we got? What, what did I miss? Uh, well, so, I will make one small correction. Uh, though it's completely uh, unneeded. So, um, I have another composition here. We saw, I should just show it on the, uh, on the render. We have that shot at the beginning here where he puts on the goggles and, you know, he dives into the world of mm. virtual salsa, right? <laughs> so these are all just from Adobe Stock, right? The chip, as a matter of fact, I modeled from scratch, which was probably completely unnecessary. There was my, yeah. Yeah, yep. but I mean, it's really just a triangle and I kind of like did a little stuff on it. Okay. Right? Um, but uh, but yeah. you can get 3D images on stock, which is great. Yes, absolutely. All, all of these veggies here, um, I, I did a very minor, like I changed the color of the pepper a little bit or whatever, but these are otherwise just like straight in from there. Excellent. <laughs> and I know you uh, you stream all the time here on Adobe Live. Where can people find you? And, and if you're looking to learn After Effects, this is the guy right here. <laughs> and he's on all the time. So where can people find you? Yeah, so um, I do a, a weekly show called Motion Design Hotline um, that's here on Adobe Live every other week um, with my good friend Evan Abrams. Hi, Evan, if you're watching. Um, and you can find us here on Adobe Live. You can also find, uh, if you go to motiondesignhotline.com, you can find all our old episodes and project files from pretty much all of them. Um, so you can dig into those and see how we built things and whatever. Awesome. Also, um, all the dumb jokes that are happening today, that's definitely the vibe of that show yeah, as well. Excellent. So Fun times. Yeah. So um, <laughs> if you missed any of this, or if you just want to go back, hit pause, rewatch some of it. I know we went over a lot of stuff. Uh, this will be archived on Adobe Live YouTube as well as on Behance. Um, I think that's all I have here. Stick around for more from the Adobe Max 2023 session. And uh, Kyle, it's been a pleasure, man. Thanks. Yeah, this yeah. has been awesome. Thanks so much for having me, and thanks Adobe, right. and thanks. Well, all right, watching. take care, guys. <laughs>